Today I fucked up in prison. This actually occurred over a decade ago when I used to be a correctional officer in a maximum security men's prison. I was working in a segregation unit at this maximum security prison. Three other officers brought back an inmate from a medical visit. This inmate was generally very decent with staff but was in full restraints due to a severe assault on another inmate months prior. Full restraints consists of leg irons and handcuffs with a waist chain that is inserted between the center of the handcuffs and then snapped back on the waist chain to hold the hands at the waist. Generally when removing this chain if you jiggle the chain it will just slip right out from between the handcuffs. On this day something was stuck so it wasn't coming loose. The inmate was on his knees to have the leg restraints removed so he could back up on his knees into his room. As a rule of thumb you never put your head right in front of their head because they can headbutt you easily in that position. So I was reaching around this kneeling inmate and trying to wiggle the chain free for a very awkward length of time. I'm notorious for cracking one-liners, and though generally these one-liners are always above the belt, on this day I spouted, without thinking, not exactly what you had in mind for a reach around. I instantly knew that I f up. I was already getting red in the face, being female this could be considered crossing the line too. Oops. And continued until I finally got the chain loose. Meanwhile the three other officers were trying hard to control their laughter, and the inmate, who was wearing a foam helmet, hit his head on the door, and his shoulders started convulsing up and down because he was laughing so hard. I fully expected to be written up for this. But as it turns out everybody just went on with their day with a little bit of laughter in an ugly place. Too long didn't read, today I fucked up by saying to a prison inmate not exactly what you had in mind for a reach around while removing restraints. Edit, spelling errors. If COs actually got disciplined for shit like this, there wouldn't be any left. Hell, it took months before they would do anything about the CO that was actually fucking inmates where I worked. Yes, it requires much generally. I guess if I made a habit of this it would have been an issue. I thought this was really funny as is, then I got to the part where you say you're female and it got so much funnier. A dude saying it would be awkward funny, a woman saying it is just hilarious. Till what reach around means. As an ex-con, I wish there were more COs like you with a sense of humor. Nothing worse than a CO with a stick up their ass that you gotta deal with on a daily basis. Like I get it, I'm in prison, now talk to me like a normal person please so I don't feel like too much of an animal lol. I'm willing to bet you made that dude's day, and now he has a funny story to tell the homies. All's well that ends well. similar story. I became a CO a long time ago, back when level 5 inmates were allowed bottles of hot sauce. I'm a probationary officer at the time of this happening, meaning that I was still being escorted by a status officer. Call dude over for a shakedown on the walk. As I'm conducting my shakedown, I grab a hold of what I thought was a bottle of hot sauce, with conviction. I ask, what's this in your pocket? A bottle of hot sauce? To which he replied, that's all me, man. I let him walk away, as my female status officer died of laughter. Today I fucked up by thinking I masturbated with a tampon in. I would like to preface this by saying, I was pretty intoxicated last night. I woke up this morning to do my usual business when I noticed two tampon wrappers in the trash. This concerned me because I did not recall removing a second one and there wasn't one in my vagina, where it should be. So I spent some time trying to recap the events of the previous night and here is what I came up with. 8 pm, tampon was placed. 8 to 11 pm, drinks with my neighbor which resulted in a very drunken stumble home. 11 pm, vague recollection collection of removing a tampon and possibly placing another one. 1130 pm, masturbation occurs. My memory pretty much goes dark mid masturbation. I, for the life of me, could not figure out where this second tampon went. If I put it in before masturbation, did I take it out before I placed the dildo? If I put it in after, where is it now? Why would it have only been in me for a few hours and why didn't I place another? When did I let my cat inside? So I called my doctor. Here I am, about to turn 30 
calling my doctor to say I think I may have lost a tampon in my vagina, but I'm not really sure. Of course they asked if I felt up there. To which I replied, yeah, and I felt something round and hard at the tip of my finger but to be honest, I've never stuck my fingers that far up my own vagina so I'm not sure if that's abnormal. I really couldn't tell if I was touching my cervix or a runaway tampon. They advised me to go to the ed to be safe and because they didn't have the equipment. So I go to the walk-in clinic. It's like they were playing where's Waldo in my vagina. They used the speculum and a flashlight to probe around my vagina looking for this MIA tampon. Lo and behold. There was nothing there and she looked pretty damn well. I probably should have been relieved but I was honestly kind of disappointed. Not that I wanted a tampon to be hiding out in my vagina, but it was pretty anticlimactic. Sent this poor nurse practitioner on a wild goose chase in my vagina. I still can't remember what happened. My theory is I put one in after masturbation, fell asleep on the couch and took it out when I got up to let my cat in and move to my bed. I guess I'll never know. The good thing is, it's not lost inside me. I did learn a couple things though. Tampons cannot get into your cervix or uterus, I asked. Apparent this happens all the time. Each of the four nurses laughed and confirmed this. Just to clarify, it did not take four nurses to confirm there was no tampon in my vagina, but I happened to speak with four different nurses. Shout out to the nurse practitioner who went searching through my vagina. Too long didn't read, I got drunk and thought I masturbated with a tampon in. Ended up making a nurse search through my vagina for no reason. As a male, I have nothing to add to this. Thank you. Wait a moment, let me grab my free award real quick. Ooh. Silver. Here you go stranger. You made me crack up today. Thank you. Glad someone could get a laugh out of it. I can confirm this happens all the time. I had to fish two tampons out of two different friends. One was after she had sex with a tampon in. Puke the joys of being a woman. Ha ha. K this is a real friend. I have to ask though. You have a speculum for friends? I learned not to worry about my missing memories after a drunk night. From what I could gather from my empirical studies on myself, I'm very well aware of my actions until I get to bed, and apparently it's while I'm sleeping that the last few hours of the night don't stick and get deleted from my brain. I've tested several times, taking vocal notes and written notes of my actions until bedtime. Not gonna go into details of why I ended up testing this, might be material for a today I fucked up post one day, but turns out drunk me is just as responsible as sober me. Drunk me forces myself to drink like a liter of water before going to sleep, wake up needing to pee super super bad but also never had a hangover so, woman shrugging, definitely can't claim to be responsible in any other way while drink though. You whipped it out and threw it on the floor and the cat has hidden it somewhere. More likely the dog ate it, if that's what happened. Today I fucked up by getting caught slapping and choking my fiance. We have a slapping and choking kink and sometimes it leaks into our daily lives but it mostly almost never leaves the house but yesterday things got heated in the backyard and I got to slapping and choking. My fiance told me that she thought she saw someone peeking over the fence but I brushed it off. Someone did peek over the wall and I guess they saw some of it. Then about half an hour later we heard a knock on the door and opened it to a pair of policemen. I had to explain our kinks awkwardly for almost 10 minutes, luckily one of them admitted to knowing about S&M but it was still embarrassing as hell to lay my guts bare to strangers, it's even more embarrassing to know that a neighbor caught us in the act and is now walking around with that misinformation and is probably likely to pass it on during gossip or something. I can't even bring myself to walk out the back door anymore. I wanna move to another state. Too long didn't read. Me and my fiancé have a slapping and choking kink and some neighbor caught us doing it in our backyard and called the police. Invite them over to watch. They'll never bother you again. Or they will never stop bothering you. Dress up in leather with whips and enjoy yourselves, in the backyard. Have fun with it. 
people in these comments having a go at the need but for complaining are the type of people who will read an article stating boyfriend slash girlfriend beats partner up with signs over the months, neighbors did nothing. Redditors reading the article, um stupid neighbors should have reported it. Op you did nothing wrong but people need to chill out without saying someone learned to mind their business I would be happy knowing I have a person next door who will have my back and immediately call the police at any sign of wrongdoing. Yeah that should never leave the bedroom tbh. Write a letter and tape it to her door. We appreciate your concern for domestic violence, and do not condone abuse in any way. What you witnessed was us in the throes of passion while you were peeping. We thought it was safe to explore our kinks on our private property, but we'll try to keep it inside from now on. Sounds like a plan, I'll do that.